This is the Financial Beat, helping you hit all the right notes in your financial plan. So sit back as we strike up the band. The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler starts now. Welcome to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Vice President and Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial, wherever you happen to be in Southern California today. We appreciate your listening. Logan's office at Regary Financial in Hemet and also in Redlands. And we appreciate your spending a little time today because we're going to talk about getting you to and through retirement. Uh, Logan, I hope you've had an outstanding week. Yeah, I've had a great week. Got my headset on, microphone charged up, and, and ready to go. <laughs> All right. Well, as long as you got plenty of uh, plenty of charge there, we're going to be fine. We're not going to uh, have a dead battery in the middle of the show here. So, <laughs> no, no, I'm never never short on words. <laughs> This is Ron Stutz saying uh, I'm always happy to hang out with Logan for a while here. The phone number to call if you'd like to have a conversation with Logan one-on-one is 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-7526. But as always, the easy way to remember it is by incorporating the word plan, 888-823-PLAN. Hey, Logan, I'm wondering if you saw this story about uh, the Dublin airport. They got 13,569 official noise complaints during the 2021 calendar year. But amazingly, more than 12,000 of those complaints, the great majority of them came from the same person at at a rate of 34 complaints per day. Uh, Maybe finding a new place to live might be in order for this particular character. What do you think? Yeah, that, that's that's quite excessive. Like you said, 34 a day. I mean, that, that must be his only job is to do those complaints, it seems like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you hope it's going to accomplish? You're going to move the airport, yeah. you know? Yeah, so. I never understood that. Like people that move next to a racetrack and then they'll complain about the noise. It's like, it was a racetrack. It was there before you bought the house. I don't understand, you yeah, know? Exactly, yeah. And, uh, you know, they spend all their time complaining about things, but... Uh, my goodness, I mean, there's something definitely wrong here if you're yeah. calling that many times. That's quite a bit. <laughs> so, hey, let's talk about something that makes a, a lot more sense here, financial planning and tennis. Uh, I don't know, uh, you know, a lot of our listeners spend a lot of time playing tennis. It's certainly a popular game, and uh, I'm just wondering what we might be able to learn about financial planning from the game of tennis. I've played some in the past, never very good at it, but uh, mm-hmm. and don't play now, but I know enough to know that the court is different in singles than it is in doubles. And I was just thinking about that and wondering if we can learn anything about financial planning from that. Yeah, and I'm kind of in that category with you. Play a little tennis here and there, but nothing nothing that I would brag about. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that is a very great analogy there. You know, difference in, in singles and doubles. It, it really is true. In tennis, you typically, the, you know, you use a wider court. The rules don't really change otherwise. You have just more space to work with if you're working with singles or doubles. Yeah. And that works very similar in retirement planning. It's really important to understand that married couples, they're typically playing on a different court than a single person. Most of the you know most of the typical rules are kind of the same, but they have probably different concerns um, as far as you know. Now we only have one income or one retirement plan to worry about. So typically, we still have those same concerns though, like fear of running out of money, um, all those typical tax concerns. That's all very similar, but it's a little bit different. And you know, for couples, tax planning might be a little bit easier because you have wider tax charts to deal with. You have you know single people, the the charts are a lot more slim as well as long-term care. I know, Ron, we've done a lot of questions on this show from other listeners, and a lot of the times it talks about, well, I don't really need long-term care because I have a spouse or I have kids or this or that, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> and th- that changes everything when you're single because now we don't have that uh, extra person there to where if something did happen, they maybe could take care of things, and it's really just you. So what I always say for a lot of our clients, and we do work with a lot of single women. We have a lot of single women that are approaching retirement that come on board, and I think really it's because most of the time, you know, women end up outliving the men based off the based off the charts. Yeah. And um, you know, we have a lot of them and they have a lot of different uh, they have a lot of the same concerns, but we have to plan just a little bit differently. I mean, you have to look at income, you have to look at taxes, you have to look at care planning, you have to look at risk. I know a lot of our uh, single clients, they may have less of a risk tolerance because they might not have as much money put away or they might not have that other person to kind of be there to kind of that 
typically in a relationship, one's the risky person, one's not. Yeah. So typically once, you know, it's just a single person, you typically, the risk does come down. They're more and more worried about, well, you know, now I only have one social security. Now I might only have one pension. Now I only have this one or two 401ks to work with. So it really does change it. And I always tell people, you really can't take the same advice from maybe a friend or a neighbor that is a married couple to a single person because you know that single person they have to worry about themselves and really make sure that they're building a plan that's going to work for them they don't really have as much room for error and make sure you know what size court you're playing on so that you can plan accordingly so to speak and yeah. you know uh, you know in the little bit of tennis that i played in the past i always loved playing on clay because it's not quite as fast as playing on a hard court. Yep. And uh, I know that certain players play better on one surface than others. And uh, you certainly a lot of the pros, you know, you can tell the, the difference in what they yep. prefer. But how does that relate to financial planning? Yeah, great point is again, you know, because like you said, a lot of these different professionals or even amateurs, they, they prefer different courts and play better on different circumstances. And I think that really relates a lot to financial advisors. A lot of financial advisors are different. Some of them excel in different areas. Some advisors might specialize more in retirement income planning, while others might be better suited for families who are younger and are more focused on that more aggressive growth or saving for college. Um, they might have that more specialized niche that they, that they focus on. And uh, I know us, our, our biggest goal is we are really good at working with people that are approaching retirement and really planning for retirement. I always joke, I, most of our clients are coming on board with us as they're ready to climb down the hill, right? They've already gotten to the top of that mountain and now they're thinking, okay, I've worked 30 or 40 years. Uh, maybe I have an advisor, maybe I don't, but I've done well till this point. How, how can I make sure I'm doing the right things to come down this hill and start drawing income, start tax planning, start leaving a legacy? How do I get all those in order? And that really is our specialty because I've met other advisors that are really good at that accumulation phase. You know, they maybe buy or sell options or very aggressive with certain stock holdings. And that doesn't fit a lot of retirees' ideal retirement, you know, by taking a ton of risks. So, you know, you really got to make sure you're working with someone that is really, that knows what surface you're on and they specialize in that surface. Yeah, and a lot of people who are climbing mountains, for example, it's more dangerous coming down than it is going up. You know, so many people get, yeah. <laughs> get hurt or killed, you know, coming down the, yep. the mountain. So, yeah, like you said, that, that's one of the most crucial points. I mean, like you said, most people fail coming down the mountain, and that, that's the same with retirement planning. I've talked about it time and time again on the show, but I could give you more, more instances than one where that's where most people mess up is coming down that hill. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, when you're playing tennis, holding serve is, is very important. If you know anything at all about tennis, and uh, explain that if you would, Logan, and also how it relates to helping someone prepare for getting to and through retirement. Yeah, typically, if you if it, maybe you're not even a tennis player, maybe you like ping pong or something, right? But yeah. you know, if, if you're one of those people that when you're serving the ball, you need to make sure that you're capitalizing on your points, right? That typically the server is supposed to be the one that's supposed to be doing better in that instance. Yeah. And you really want to make sure you're capitalizing on that. It's no fun to to lose a point here or there because you messed up on your serve, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> Really got to make sure you know know that you're uh, really consistent in, in capitalizing on what you can control. We can't control everything in sports or life. And that's why it's really important to know that, you know, holding a serve in financial planning, I would relate that very similar to control the things that you can control. You can't control the stock market. I know we wake up every day and watch the TV and hope it goes up or doesn't go down too much, but that really doesn't have much control of it. You you don't really make much of a decision in that. You can't control um, you can't control a lot of those ifs, but you could control your risk. You know, I mean that's one way to take advantage of it. We might be able to get a plan to where we can control risk and not lose as much during volatile markets. There's also other ways you really can't control inflation, right? <laughs> None of us love going to the grocery store, to the lumber store, or the hardware store, or to buy a car, any of that right now because of how much inflation's up. But you can control how much money you're saving each month or how much you're growing your money to combat inflation. So like you said, Ron, you really got to take control of what you can take control of. And I always tell people, you a lot of people worry. We all worry, right? We worry about what the market's going to do this year, what it's going to do next year. We're looking for different options. And I always tell people, there's ways to get a comfortable investment plan to where you can control what your risk is. You 
always have to be aggressive. You don't always have to be too conservative. There's ways to make sure you have a plan that's kind of fit for what you're trying to do and make sure you're, make sure you're holding that serve and con- controlling what you can control. Yeah, absolutely right. And uh, as we have said so many times before, control what you can control. Retiring takes a lot of uh, strategy. And Logan Sadler is certainly comfortable doing all of that kind of stuff. And uh, say to yourself in the morning, today I will not stress over things that I can't control. (laughs) You know, (laughs) good good note. There you go. Yeah. (laughs) It's, uh, you know, you don't want to lie awake at night worried about outliving your money. Put together a plan beforehand, and Logan Sadler can help you do that. Logan, I'm going to give out your number here in just a moment. But what happens when someone makes that phone call? Yeah, the best part, what the discovery process is intended for, you make that phone call, and it's really a one-on-one meeting with me where we're really going to take a deep dive into what it is you're trying to accomplish. A lot of you guys out there that are listening to this show, maybe have been listening to it for three or four months like some of our other listeners, and now you're finally getting around to making the phone call because you're getting closer to retirement. You're really thinking a lot more about what is my income going to look like? Am I taking too much risk? Is there ways I can improve this plan? And that's really what the discovery meeting is intended for. We're going to take a deep dive, get to know each other, and really get to build out that comprehensive plan that maybe you're not getting right now from your current advisor, or maybe you don't have advisor an advisor at this point. So give us a call. I'd love to spend an hour with you and tell you a little bit more about our process. All right. That number again is 888-823-PLAN. That's 888-823-7526. The number for Regary Financial with offices in Redlands and also Hemet. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call right now. Remember, all you got to do is leave a message with your name and phone number. You'll get a call back and you can have a discovery meeting with Logan Sadler. No cost and no obligation. And remember also, they have great partnerships with local CPAs, attorneys, real estate agents, mortgage lenders, Medicare specialists and offer well-rounded guidance in all things related to your retirement. They take good care of their clients at Regary Financial. 888-823-PLAN. That's your number to call. Logan Sadler is on the radio. Go tell everybody you know. We'll be back with more in a moment on today's edition of The Financial Beat. You're listening to The Financial Beat, the show that makes sure your financial plan has the perfect pitch. We're back now with more of the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. Logan Sadler's number is 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-7526. 888-823-PLAN. Call that number right now. Leave a message with your name and phone number. You'll get a call back from Logan Sadler. Not only does he have this radio show, but he has podcasts and also a lot of videos on his own YouTube channel, So in other words, it's a lot about educating folks, and Logan Sadler really enjoys doing that. And Logan, you do a great job telling stories and explaining things so that we can all understand them. And that is important with a financial advisor. Some folks try to talk over your head, but Logan Sadler never does that. Yeah, thanks, Ron. We we always try to try to keep it on on a fair playing ground. Eight 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 two three plan. One more time. That is your number to call for Regary Financial. Eight 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 two three plan. Well, it's it's kind of painful to think about that, but let's talk about pain points. Uh, everybody has a certain pain point. Some people have more than one when it comes to financial planning. Uh, those pain points are different for each person, but everyone has something that bothers them. And I know you're acquainted with all of these. Uh, Tell us about some times that you've helped somebody deal with, for example, extreme worry about running out of money before dying. We talk about that all the time. Yeah, that's that's typically still number one, right, on the worry list about people. What are they worried about with retirement? They always say, "I'm well, I'm worried about running out of money before I die. And uh, one of the things I always like to talk about here is you hear me say plan, plan, plan all the time. And I I really do... think that that is a big problem for a lot of people. They don't have a detailed cash flow plan. They don't, they haven't sat down with an advisor or done it themselves and they haven't really walked through what the income probability of success is. What I mean by that is if I took X amount of money out of my portfolio during a good market, how long would it last? During a bad market, how long would it last? They haven't stress test or walk through a lot of the data points of it, as well as they typically are ignoring some of the other investment options out there. When it when it comes to investments, it'd be, you'd be amazed how many people come in and think that there's only stocks or bonds. You know, they they think that because you're an advisor, you only work with stocks or bonds. And yes, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, they all are a very great component and and deserve a place at the table there for retirement plans. Planning. But there's also other products out there. I always tell people if one of our biggest risk is running out of money, well, then, you know, there's other things out there to offset that risk to other people.
people. There's fixed index annuities are a great spot to where if we're worried about running out of money, why not take a portion of it, put it in the fixed index annuity? They earn a decent interest rate and they pay you cash flow for life. They'll pay you a set amount of money for whatever you put in there. They'll pay you out a guaranteed amount for the rest of your life. So that sounds like a pretty good spot for some of our clients that are coming in and saying, all right, Logan, you know, I got $800,000. I'm getting ready to retire. Um, I am worried about running out of money. What, what's a good spot for some of this money? The, the fixed index annuities do fit a really good spot, um, as well as there's some other ways to do it. But that's one of the more popular ones. And typically, a lot of people just kind of ignore that when it comes down to retirement planning. They think, I just got to put money in the market and take out X amount per year and really just hope the market's good. Well, I don't know about you, but when it comes to retirement, I don't really like to hope. You know, I kind of like to know uh, what's going to happen, not just kind of cross my fingers and, and hope, hope I keep seeing green on the screen for a few years. <laughs> yeah, it's such a shame that uh, so many people lie awake at night worried about outliving their money once they get mm-hmm. retired. And, you know, you don't have to, things don't have to be that way. Just to uh, yeah. give Logan Sadler's office a call, have a conversation, get a written plan put together and stick to it and, and you will be fine. Logan Sadler can help you uh, realize your hopes and dreams in retirement. Uh, a lot of us, you know, we talk about taxes a lot on this show and uh, some people just are worried to death about taxes and they hate paying every penny in taxes. Uh, I guess there's a huge amount of angst out there, particularly about taxes. Yeah, absolutely. That's a big fear for, you know, a lot of our clients that have accumulated wealth, a lot of them are just, they're very fearful of what taxes are going to look like. Well, you know, they're probably already not pretty, but they're worried about what it's going to look like in a few years. But a lot of people, what they do is they continuously just talk about, you know, man, taxes are going to go up, taxes are going to go up. And a lot of them aren't getting a tax plan together, you know. If something's bothering you or you're worried about something, you know, you typically got to make an adjustment. I have, I have this one client, we've actually, you know, it was one of his biggest concerns was taxes. For years and years, all he talked about was taxes, taxes, right? So I, after multiple different you know, attempts with our current client, I was like, hey, let's do some tax planning. Let's, let's do this, that, or the other. And we were able to do Roth conversions, tax-free life insurance. A lot of people don't know about that. Uh, if you have non-qualified cash money, you typically could put some of that into a life insurance policy that generates some type of tax-free income or tax-free death benefit at a certain date. So, I mean, there's a lot of ways to do tax planning. And with this certain client, we were actually able to do Roth conversions and save him uh, over his lifetime by implementing those Roth conversions effectively. We were able to save him around one hundred fifty dollars to $200,000 over his lifetime in taxes. Yeah. I mean, so you look at that. I mean, that's a pretty good savings overall, as well as implementing some tax-free life insurance. Now he had a good chunk of money that if he passes away, there's a tax-free death benefit, or if he needed some income, the index universal life would pay out tax-free income to him when he's ready. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways to what I call insulate yourself from fear of rising taxes. Kind of just sitting by and doing nothing probably isn't the best way to, to fix that anxiety or to fix that, that nervousness you have. You really need to get a plan to together. And I think a lot of the problem is most advisors don't spend a lot of time. They just want to show you, you know, a stock or a bond. They don't really want to dive into what else is out there. What other advanced planning topics can we do to save you money? Maybe not this year, but over five or a 10 or a 20 year retirement, if we could save you a certain amount of money, then it might be worth it to implement. And that's exactly what we do with a lot of our clients that are coming in because taxes are a big problem. And we really want to make sure that at the end of the day, our job as the advisor is to make sure that we're making you and saving you the most amount of money over your retirement. A lot of people sit around and do nothing about something else, too, and that is long-term care. Most people don't like to talk about it or even think about it, but according to statistics, uh, so many of us are going to end up needing some form of long-term care, and uh, a lot of folks walk around with just a paralyzing fear of Mm -hmm. ending up in a nursing home someday. Yeah, you're right. This is probably one of the most common. When I ask, when, when you come in for that discovery meeting, I always ask clients, you know, what are your three biggest primary financial concerns? And it's typically long-term care comes up on a lot of people's topics. And it's funny because like you said, when we start talking about, well, here's what we could do for it, they kind of ends up taking a back seat for a lot of people. Um, and I think a lot of it is to do with because a lot of the older policies that are out there, they kind of maybe have a bad rap to them, or maybe it's their, ah, well, you really didn't get your money back or, or this, that, or the insurance company wins, you know, this, that, or the other. I'm here to tell you that long-term care and care planning 
the products and the way that there's those investments can be utilized are a they they have changed dramatically over the last few years and and of course myself going to continuous trainings throughout the year um, some of the long term care products are out there nowadays are phenomenal I mean not everybody needs one but if it's one of your biggest concerns a lot of you guys are taking care of your parents that are in a nursing home or you're having to pay for it out of pocket or maybe they have a small policy but you're really kind of seeing the benefit of how how crucial this could be to retirement so I always tell people nowadays some of the products that are out there, we can really utilize these in some of our retirement planning. Some of them are, have a lump sum option. You know, maybe you got a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars where you have in non qualified investments where you're saying, you know what, uh, I do have a chunk of money that I'd be willing to utilize to take care of that need down the road. Some of these long term care policies have a pretty good long term care payout as well as a death benefit. So if you pass away, you might get your money back and more in some cases, depending on what type of policies, as well as there's some of them where you do payments on it. You know, like the old ones, you pay X amount a month or per year and you get X amount of benefit, but a lot of them have a death benefit on them. So you get most of your money back or, or more in some cases, depending on the policy. But I think a lot of people don't spend enough time and a lot of advisors don't talk about it because I always joke, it's not as sexy, right? It's not as, it's not as fun to talk about long-term care as it is to talk about Tesla stock or one of those other things. But it's one of those topics that a lot of our clients need and we see the importance of it when we're talking about, you know, I have, like I always tell you guys, I have clients that are spending ten to $12,000 per month in long-term care and that's really wiping out a lot of the savings. So I always see the benefit in looking long-term and looking at care planning and seeing if it's something that's in our ballpark and something we could utilize. If so, we want to be able to show that to our clients. Ten or twelve thousand dollars a month—that is painful just hearing about it. Too much less, it, isn't it? To pay it? Yeah, yeah. I got I got some of them on the low end between six thousand, and some of them on the high end around twelve to thirteen thousand per mm. month. It, it's amazing. It's 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 really sad, like you said. Wow, really. Eight 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 two three plan is your number to call for Regary Financial. Logan Sadler is uh, on the radio, and uh, if you're in Temecula, Orange County, Loma Linda, wherever you are today, we appreciate your listening. We're talking about pain points. We all have them in one way or another. Uh, there are some folks who just have a general uneasiness about retiring and, and walking away from a paycheck. There's a little bit of uncertainty about all of that. And uh, how do you help folks deal with that kind of thing? Yeah, that one is it's funny because I've had a couple of clients where they were afraid to walk away from the job and that paycheck because they didn't have enough money saved. Mm -hmm. I also have other clients where they've had more than enough money saved and we've been telling them for years they can fully retire, but it's hard to walk away. I get it. A lot of us, um, I'm one of those people, I guess you can categorize, or at least my wife does as a workaholic, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, I enjoy working. I enjoy what I do. And a lot of you guys out there that are in your 60s and 70s still working, you probably do enjoy what you're doing or can do it to a limited capacity. What I always tell people is, you want to make sure you're working for the right reasons. You know, you want to make sure you're working because you want to work and you're healthy enough to work. A lot of people that come in here and they, you know, maybe uh, don't get referred over by a friend and say, hey, you need to get your financial life on track. A lot of them say, well, I don't really need a retirement plan. I'm just going to work forever. Well, yeah. that sounds great on paper, but um, theoretically, that's not what happens, right? Health gets in the way, um, age gets in the way, and all of a sudden you can't work anymore and your retirement plan just went up in the air. So, I really like a lot of our clients. I have one I'm thinking of off the top of my head. He's been with us, man, probably 12 or 13 years he's been with us, him and his wife. Um, he was in the construction industry. He did very, very well, saved his money. And he has around you know, around a $1.7 million estate uh, when you're looking at retirement accounts and investments. And he was able to retire at probably 65. We had him set up to be able to retire. He worked all the way till 71. Mm -hmm. You know, he, his wife retired at 65 and they were going to retire together. And then, you know what? He said, maybe just one more year, maybe just one more year. And it was funny because every time he came in, I would write on my notes, you know, so let me guess next year, right? You know, I knew he wasn't retiring, but to be able to have an income plan set up and know that he could retire, it made him feel that much better. It made him and his wife feel that much more comfortable that if, if things got bad at work or his health took a turn, that at any time they could pull the trigger and retire and be living off, in their case, more money retired than they did when they were working. Oh, and that's... Wow. 
That's not a bad spot to be in, right? <laughs> no, not not at all. I mean, that's a great situation to be in. Logan Sadler can help you get into that same kind of situation if you have, if you've been doing a good job saving your money over the years and all that kind of thing. So why not give Logan's office a call and come in and talk about it? One more thing I wanted to mention here, and we talk about this on the on the show all the time as well. A lot of people are just pain to think about what's happening in the stock market and suffer from anxiety about an impending market crash. But there are ways you can help those folks, too. Yeah. And and that's another one that kind of goes back to our first segment. I mean, really, you could a lot of people have this worry and 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 it's it's not funny to me, but it's 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 it just makes me, you know, think about it more and more. A lot of people have this anxiety about, man, if the market crashes or I've never seen the market higher and they don't do anything about it. You know, I'm not saying to go to cash or I'm not saying to sell. I'm saying you really need to take a look at what your risk level is. If you're risk if you're in the same stocks, bonds, mutual funds that you were in when you were 30 or 40 and now you're 60 or 70, you're probably not even close to the right amount of risk tolerance that you might be comfortable with. And what I always tell people is if you have $100,000 and the market drops 10%, that's, you know, that's that's $10,000, right? If the market you have a million dollars and it drops 10%, that's a hundred grand. Mm. So a lot of people don't realize as you accumulate money, when the percentages drop, it can go down potentially more money than you're probably comfortable with. So what we always like to start with with our clients is what is your comfort level? If the market went down X amount, would this bother you? And they say, no, it wouldn't, or yes, it would. Well, if it would, then we need to make an adjustment to this portfolio because where you're currently structured, it might go down 30 or 40%. And then they go, oh man, 30 or 40%. I couldn't handle that or I could handle that. And that's when you need to know there's other there's other opportunities out there. There's investment models that we have that are risk managed where they, they are very uh, goal oriented to managing risk. There's fixed index annuities out there nowadays where some of them you can get 70 or 80 percent of what some of these market indexes are going to do, but with no downside. I mean, so that sounds pretty good for a portion of the money yeah. as well as, yeah, right. <laughs> and as well as they have that cash flow option in there for the income, um, there's structured notes. There's a lot of these other opportunities out there to where we can diversify and offset risk. I'm not saying with all of your money, but for that comfortable amount that you're not comfortable with going down more than, maybe we need to make some adjustments. And a lot of us sometimes just kind of sit by and then the market drops and we say, well, I wish I would have done this, that, or the other. Well, you know, typically uh, a lot of those times this can be done beforehand to really mitigate and making sure that we're handling those anxieties about the market crashing. Because I hate to break it to a lot of you, but the market goes up and the market goes down, right? It doesn't always just go up. So you need to be very, very cautious about what your risk tolerance is. And that's exactly what we do here at Regary Financial. We are a comprehensive planning firm that looks at more than just stocks, bonds. We really want to look at what's your comfort level? What, what type of risk are you wanting to take? What type of return are we looking for on your money? And how is this going to get you to and through retirement and affect your overall plan? So if you're interested in that, that's exactly what we do at our discovery meetings. If you're currently with an advisor and you don't feel like you're getting that same level of service or you're not getting that planning aspect that you need to get you to where you're trying to go, give us a call. I'd be happy to sit down with you, give you a second opinion, and see if we can't bring some value to your retirement plan. 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN, your number to call for Regary Financial. There are two offices, Hammett and also Redlands, and you can have a conversation, a discovery meeting with Logan Sadler at no cost at all, not one penny. And also, there's no obligation to do anything beyond that. But first, you have to make that phone call to 888-823-PLAN. You can have a conversation on the phone or maybe via Zoom, or maybe you might want to come into one of the offices. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make it happen. Now, Logan Sadler, of course, has this radio show every week and meets new folks because of the radio show. So why not join the Regary Financial family or at least find out about it? 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make it happen. Ron Stutz here along with Logan Sadler. We'll be right back with more on The Financial Beat. ever find yourself skipping through countless songs trying to find the perfect one? Yeah, we've been there too, and know it can be frustrating. Much like skipping through the countless advertisements from other financial advisors, it can seem like there's so much misinformation. But here on The Financial Beat, you can rest assured we're providing you with the best information possible. So don't push skip on this show, because we have some important information coming up. 
You're listening to the Financial Beat with the one and only Logan Sadler, your investment officer, chief investment officer, and vice president at Regary Financial, serving you in Southern California. We appreciate your spending a little time with us today. My name is Ryan Stutz. I always enjoy my conversations with Logan about getting to and through retirement. 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call if you'd like a one-on-one conversation with Logan. It's not going to cost you anything and not going to obligate you to do do anything at all beyond that, 888-823-PLAN is your number to call. Not only does Logan have this radio show every week, which we enjoy doing, but also there are podcasts that folks can access and also videos on YouTube. Logan, tell us about those. Yeah, so if you're listening to the radio show right now and you like the sound of mine and Ron's voice, you could uh, head over to wherever you download podcasts on either Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon, and there's up to 50 episodes currently up on podcasts that you could download, listen to them whenever you want in your convenience, and get some further education. As well as Ron said, we're also on YouTube, so you can go over to YouTube and type in The Financial Beat, and uh, we'll pop up there. And I believe right now we have around 15 videos that are up there. Yeah. And we do new ones each week on different retirement topics and different current events. So head over there and check those two platforms out. Again, just additional information for you guys to get a hold of. Yeah, if you're if you're lying awake at night worried about things, then uh, that's something you do at three in the morning. You can go and, and access those <laughs> YouTube videos or podcasts. And uh, it's all about education. And Logan Sadler does a great job of, of doing that. Uh, Logan, I know you work with three different generations of the client families. And many of those clients have been with the firm for more than a quarter of a century. And, uh, uh, you know, going back in, in history, Regary Financial has been around for a long time. But let's go even farther back in history. 233 years ago, long before you and I were around, or even yeah. Regary Financial wasn't around back then, April 30th, 1789, George Washington was inaugurated as the first president of the United States. Wow. Yeah, that, that is a little bit longer than I've been around as well as our firm. But uh, yeah, that is it is crazy to think about. It's been 233 years and, and what a what a, what a great accomplishment that was for our country and, and getting everything set up and doing it the way they did it and, and being able to do that. What an accomplishment. And look at us 233 years later, still still holding on and treading water. Yeah. I, I wonder what old George would think uh, if he were here today, what he would think yes. about, you know, what's going on in this country, how we're all so divided and, you know, all of that kind of thing. And I wonder if that's part of his dream for America. It's funny you said that because I was kind of thinking that as well. Every time one of these good history lessons comes up about, you know, Benjamin Franklin or any of these people from the past that were huge influencers, it, I really always wonder, like you said, what are, the, are they sitting there going, what are they doing? Are they, are they thinking, well, that's how we thought it would play out, right? Yeah. You know, I always wonder. I wonder if George Washington would be a social media influencer these days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no kidding. Know. That would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to talk about a federal crime here. I don't know why, but we always talk about federal crimes in this show. And most of them have to do with money in one way or another. But did you know it's a federal crime to drive an off-road vehicle on public land and not yield to a horse-drawn carriage? You know, I, I didn't, and I've never, <laughs> I, don't, I don't run across many horse-drawn carriages out here in my area, <laughs> but that is, now I know. Just a good example of how so many of the crimes that are on the books were written so long ago and have absolutely no application to what's going on today. Well, well, I'll be honest, I'll throw my two cents in here. I actually, the crime of the week is one of my favorite ones because I never know, I never know where you're going to come with from on this one, and I, it keeps me on my toes. <laughs> well, I'm glad. Hey, listen, let's talk about doing your research. And I know that uh, a lot of people out there want to want to feel informed about their options when they're making financial decisions. So let's discuss the ways on the show today that people inform themselves. First of all, people get financial news and information from a variety of sources like TV shows, this radio show, hopefully, magazines, newsletters, etc. Who are the primary media voices that folks listen to in your experience? Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Um, you know what I what I always say is one of the more common ones you'll see that people are listening to is you'll get you know Dave Ramsey's a big one out there right now where you get a lot of a lot of clients that have heard his show or listened to him or followed some of his uh, you know some of his beliefs. You got Jim Cramer who's on the news a lot mentioning stocks and, and you know buy it or sell it, which he he has a pretty good show. And uh, as well as you got Susie Orman, who's a big one out there, Ken Fisher. Um, those are some of the bigger names I would say that I hear a lot where clients are saying, hey, what do you think about this, that or the other? You know, um, My biggest problem with 
some of them is um, a lot of them have really great shows. Like Dave Ramsey has helped you know lots of people get out of debt and really get on track for saving. And I, I really agree with a lot of what he says on that aspect. But I'm never a big fan of like blanket recommendations. You know, some of these people that are I mentioned will say, you know, you don't need an annuity or you don't need this type of life insurance. You need this kind or, you know, you only need growth aggressive mutual funds. And I just don't agree with that because a lot of the clients I'm meeting with, a lot of you listeners right now who call into the show all the time, you know, a lot of a lot of you are getting closer to retirement and you're not necessarily as comfortable with some of the risk that are that they're mentioned in some of these investments or an annuity might be a good spot for some of your money and some of you it might not be you know and what I always say is I really like to keep financial uh, financial advice independent I really like to look at it from a personal point of view where this might be a good thing for you but not the next person it just depends on what you're trying to accomplish with your money what your goals are what your comfortability is and I think a lot of those voices out there do a really good job to some extent as far as what's good and, and what to get on track for for general advice but I don't like the one size fits all and and you need to do this and by the way you can call me and I'll do it for you, you know. So I just think it's really important to make sure when you're meeting with any financial advisor or you're getting any news or any information, you want to make sure it's personalized to you, which is obviously hard to do from a magazine or the or the news, right? So I definitely recommend, you know, keeping things more personal to what you're trying to accomplish and more customized for you. But those are some of the big voices that I'm sure you've heard, Ron, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners have, where a lot of them do have great programs and uh, you know have edu- educated a lot of people throughout the years. Yeah. Well, uh, as we have said so many times on this show, it's all individual. There's no one size fits all when it comes to retirement planning. And I know you deal with folks on an individual basis, tailoring a retirement plan to uh, what their specific needs and wants and situations are. So, mm-hmm. you know, absolutely, a very simple concept for all of us to understand there. What are the pros and cons of using the internet for financial research. Well, the funny thing about the internet, I don't know about you, but I, I've been one of those people where I've gone to look something up and I end up getting more confused about what I'm looking up sometimes. Has that yeah. ever happened to you, Ron? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, good. I'm glad I'm not alone on that one. You know, and I think a lot of the time when you're looking up something, the internet is full of great information. But it doesn't know you. It doesn't know what your comfortability is. It doesn't know what your situation is. And it really doesn't get specific to what exactly this fits or who this fits. The other thing I don't like about it all the time is if you look up, like you could type in, you know, universal life insurance, depending on which article you click on, one's going to say it's the best thing that sends sliced bread. The other one's going to say only con artists sell this, right? So it's such a wide parameter of what is what it really is trying to decide. And so my biggest thing is I'm a big fan of looking up why is this good? And why is this bad? Because I think a lot of the times I know when I'm meeting with clients and a lot of them like that I do this, I'll tell you, I don't think any investment's always good. I don't think any investment's always bad. It really depends on what you're trying to do with that investment. I always use the joke, if if you have $100,000 and you're trying to, you come in and tell the advisor, I'm trying to grow this money as aggressive as possible, and they put you in a CD that earns 2%, well, that was a bad investment, right? Yeah. But if you're a client that comes in and says, I have $100,000, I don't want to lose any money, and I'm okay with a 2% return, and I don't mind if it's tied up for a few years. Well, then a CD is a great investment for that, right? So <laughs> you, you really got to look at things from both angles. And, and when you're researching things on the internet, Internet. It's great to get some general information about the product, but you really want to make sure you're researching some items like why is this good and why is this bad. And as the advisor, um, if you're if you're meeting with us or meet with other people, you want to make sure, which I know I do a good job of, of telling you why this is a good fit and why this might not be a good fit for a certain situation, and really tell you the pros and the cons, and not just rely on a search engine that you know is very very general and doesn't really pertain to what it is you're trying to use that money for. Well, you certainly want to be well informed and and some folks just carry it to an extreme and Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering is it possible to do too much research before making a financial decision Oh man, I tell you what, um, I, I have a lot of clients where you know in the years past where it would it takes them a long time because like you said, you talk to them about this type of management style or maybe this type of, of ETF or an annuity or life insurance or care whatever we're talking about care planning. Really, you know, you could overwhelm yourself with research. Sometimes the more and more you dig, the more and more confused you get. And what I always tell people is my biggest you know goal out of the financial plan is we do a lot of goal based planning. So what I always tell people is if you're looking at the investment 
investment plan. We might have three, four, five, six, seven different recommendations sometimes in one plan because, again, we're very comprehensive. We use life insurance. We use annuities. We use stock market investments. We use you know real estate investments sometimes. We use a lot of different things. So what I'm always saying is if you look at things from just one investment perspective, it might not make a lot of sense. But if you stand back and look at it from an overall financial plan, a lot of those investments complement each other and really make up where the other one lacks. So you really want to make sure when you're doing the research, you want to look at it, obviously make sure you know what you're getting into, understand the investments, but also you don't want to do too much research to where all of a sudden a year later, you forgot what you were trying to accomplish with the plan. (laughs) Yeah. What's a way that you've seen someone uh, being influenced by their own research in a way that was actually harmful to them? In other words, they kind of you know, got in their own way. Yeah, I, I've seen that a bunch. You know, I've been, I've seen some clients, I'm going to use, we've been talking about risk a lot, so I'll, I'll stick on that topic for today. But essentially, I've had clients where they've been really, really risky. I We do a complimentary risk report for every client when they come on board. I want to know what your current portfolio looks like and what type of risk it is and make sure we're taking the proper amount. I've had some clients where, you know, they're 80% at risk, which means that, um, you know, their portfolio theoretically can go down, you know, 30 or 40%, let's say, in this example. And I've told them, let's reduce some risk, maybe look at some bonds or um, some different fixed or fixed index annuities to offset some risk, or maybe even structured notes. And uh, there's a lot of ways to do that. And they've really just kind of, uh, you know, I don't want to say just did nothing, but they've really just researched and researched. And I had one client, it took him six or seven months to figure out what he wanted to do. And of course, right when he kind of was deciding on what to do, we had a huge market crash in 2020 due to COVID. And the market bottomed, he lost about 30% on a hefty amount. And then he was so mad and so nervous that he didn't know what to do. So he just put it in cash. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, the market rebounded and he was he was kind of shell shocked. So he really didn't do anything after that, whether it was with us or another advisor, he just really kind of just left it there in cash because now he was like, man, I lost so much money. I didn't know what to do. I I just overthought the situation and I really just kind of influenced myself the wrong way to overthink things. And, you know, that was a really bad circumstance because unfortunately his timing, I mean, was, you know, worst case scenario, I guess you could say as far as that goes. So I always tell people we have a pretty clean process here when when clients are coming on board with us. After you make that call and you come in for the discovery meeting, our first meeting is generally just getting to understand you and what you're trying to do and tell you more about what type of services and investment philosophies we have. And then if it's a fit, typically from there, we have two or three meetings after that. And then typically that's over, you know, a three week process or so. And then typically after that, we've given you so much information. We, you've looked at everything. You've had time to do the research. And then we can make a decision on it if this is a good fit or if we need to make adjustments. But you really don't want to drag some of these investment processes out for, for a year or six months because things change so fast out there in the world that sometimes waiting is not a great thing. Um, of course, you can't always time things perfect, but it's really important just to make sure that you're not getting in your own way. Make sure you're doing your research, understanding what it is, and make sure you trust the advisor. I always tell people, if you can't trust me, then then we're not a good fit because you need to have confidence in the advisor you're working with. And I think that's really what a lot of people need to rely on when working with the advisor, not always just the investments, but making sure you trust and can have a good rapport with the advisor. And that's always our main goal. And I kind of gave you a little glimpse in to what to expect if you make that phone call to come in, sit down for the discovery meeting, and let's see if we're a good fit and we can't add some value to you and your family's retirement plan. Don't be your own worst enemy. Go ahead and call Logan Sadler's office and arrange a time to have that discovery meeting. 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. That is your financial beat number for Brigary Financial. Offices in Hemet and Redlands, wherever you are in Southern California, call that number right now. Leave a message with your name and phone number and you can get started. 888-823-PLAN plan. It's all about getting you to and through retirement the most efficient way possible, the most tax efficient way possible, and and to give you some peace of mind. That's what Logan Sadler is all about. Uh, This is the Financial Beat. We'll be back with more in a moment. We talk a lot about creating a better 401k, but are we actually taking steps to do so? Maybe it's time to stop talking the talk and start walking the walk. By texting the word ADVICE to 21,000, Logan Sadler can provide you with his 401k action steps, a guide that provides you with powerful information that could potentially save you thousands in taxes and fees and put you one step ahead when it comes to your retirement. So text the word ADVICE to the number 21000 today. For this special report, 
text the word advice to the number 21,000. You hear that? That's the sound of a plan that has some serious issues. Ah, much better. That's the sound of a plan that was created by someone listening to the financial beat with Logan Sadler. So which sound is your financial plan making? We're back now with more of the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, VP and Chief Investment Officer at Brigary Financial. You know, Logan works with three different generations of folks who are planning for retirement or maybe getting through retirement or getting to retirement. It's all part of the plan at, uh, with Logan Sadler. He takes a comprehensive look at your situation, your individual scenario, and we're all different. Many of the clients have been with Brigary Financial for more than 25 years, and it's important to point out that they have great partnerships with local CPAs, attorneys, real estate agents, mortgage lenders, and even Medicare specialists to help offer well-rounded guidance in all things financial for their clients. If you'd like to have a discovery meeting, you can discover things about Logan. He can discover things about you. That's all it is, really. It's just kind of a getting-to-know-you session. 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN for your conversation. 888-823-PLAN. Uh, no cost and no obligation. You know, Logan, a lot of what you do on this show is educating folks, and I know you have some uh, YouTube videos that are available for people out there, and they, they can access those at any time, uh, 24-7. Uh, tell us how they can get to those and what they're going to learn. Yeah, Ron, we, we started this actually just a few weeks ago, so hot off the press, and uh, it's the Financial Beat YouTube channel. So head over, for those of you that don't know, just head over to YouTube and type in the Financial Beat, and you'll see our logo pop up right there. And we, we're doing a video every week on different retirement topics and kind of taking more of a deep dive into some of these individual topics that you guys have been wanting to hear about. And uh, there's different videos each week on uh, different types of retirement planning topics. Again, just more of a deep dive. And for those of you that are visual, like myself, it's a good a good spot to look because you'll be able to hear the same voice you hear on the radio, but obviously get a picture to the face as well as being able to see some charts and types of topics that we're covering in a visual format. So head over there, click subscribe, and follow us along. Well, I always like to say that I have the perfect face for radio, but you have a perfect face for the TV as well and for YouTube <laughs> videos. So, you know, it's okay. Let's hope. It's not going to shock anybody. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I got a quote for you here, and uh, it's from Ambrose Bierce. I have no idea who that is. Maybe you do. No, yeah. I don't. Uh, well, anyway, wh whoever he is or she is uh, said something that makes a lot of sense. He said, an acquaintance is a person whom we know well enough to borrow from, but not well enough to lend to. <laughs> What do you think yeah. of that one? <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to put this in my uh, in my quote book here. I love that. That is great. Um, I, we all have neighbors or, or coworkers or friends where it's like, yeah, hey, how are you? Um, and then they're asking if they could borrow your lawnmower or something. And it's like, well, we're not there yet, you know. So it, <laughs> I definitely, I definitely could relate to that. Yeah, really. Time for the mailbag, and we have some great questions today, Logan. First one is from Olivia in L.A., and Olivia says, a place where I worked several years ago. It's gone out of business, and I just received a letter saying that my simple IRA needed to be moved because they'll no longer be sponsoring that plan. This was the only time I've had a simple IRA, so I'm not exactly sure how it works. What are my options here? Yeah, great question. Thanks for writing in, Olivia. I appreciate it. And uh, simple IRAs are, uh, what's funny, a lot of people aren't really sure what those are. They're like, well, it's probably an IRA, right? <laughs> but how it works is it's basically a small, I call it a small business 401k, essentially, is what it is. So it has a lot of the same rules as the 401k. The contribution limits are a little bit different. But all this means is now that the employer is no longer in business, the simple IRA, all you have to do is um, you can give us a call. I'd be happy to give you more information and help you on this one. But basically what you can do is you roll that over, do a direct rollover to an IRA. And what that will allow you to do is roll that entire lump sum over there. Let's say it's, I don't know, 50 grand or whatever the amount is. You can roll that $50,000, let's say from uh, Vanguard over to Charles Schwab or whoever you want to use or whatever your advisor uses. Or if you go with us, I could instruct you better on that. But essentially, that is the best option is to do the rollover because that simple IRA amount is like a 401k. So 
typically the whole amount will be taxable if you take a withdrawal. So you typically don't want to you know withdraw the money and, and go buy a car with it or anything like that because it'll all be taxable. Plus, depending on your ages, there'll be a penalty. So the best way to go about that is to do what's called a rollover IRA directly from that simple IRA to a rollover IRA. And uh, that way it will get, keep your taxes, everything all intact and won't be any penalties or anything like that. So let me know if you have any further questions. I'd be happy to, to help you with that. Okay. Thank you very much for the question, Olivia. Hope that helps. Again, the number to call is 888-823-PLAN if you'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Logan. Next question here is from David in Oceanside. Uh, David says, I've been told that I need to make sure I have a mortgage when I retire because that will be the only tax deduction I'll have at that point. I've been paying extra on my house to have it paid off by the time I retire, but maybe I should slow down on that plan. What do you think? Yeah, that's a that's a great uh, great question there, and I, I typically uh, this has been something where sometimes the uh, generation you know older they typically are like, well, no, you got to have your house paid off, and a lot of the times that big that big concept was obviously you don't want a two or three or four hundred thousand dollar mortgage, but um, a lot of you guys in years past your mortgage might have been five, ten, twelve percent in some cases. So yes, we had to get that paid off because those interest payments would just be crucial over the remainder of that mortgage period. And uh, yes, it used to be more favorable. There's more write-offs on the house. Now it's basically just your, your interest is, is the one that you could write off, but it's at least something, right? So I always tell people, Dave, it's, it's hard in your situation to give you exact advice, but let me kind of give you a little rundown. A lot of the times, if you, let's say your interest rate is three or 4%, and let's say you have the extra money every month to put towards that, um, and your house payment isn't too much, it's affordable, all the other stuff that would kind of go into making sure it's the right move. You could typically, most people think they can make a better return than 3 or 4% over a period of time and still keep the money invested, it got to grow, and... Um, you get to keep that interest deduction write-off. So that way you're still keeping some type of write-off on the house. But if something ever happened, you still have a chunk of money that you could throw down now to pay off the house if anything ever changed or if you ever needed to. And in my opinion, that's sometimes the better way to go because what it does is allows you just to have more flexibility, more liquid cash, and keep having that deduction that you'll be able to deduct on taxes to help you at least a little bit. And that way, if something ever catastrophic happened, you have the cash to pay it off or pay that lump sum down towards it if you need to. All right. Well, good question again from David. And uh, thank you very much for taking the time to answer that, Logan. I've got one more question here today from Melody in Menifee. Uh, Melody says, part of me really wants to retire, but I've gotten pretty used to having a paycheck for the last 40 years. And I can't imagine not having one, even though I have savings. How do people ever get comfortable with the idea of not having money coming into their checking account every month? Yeah, great, great, great question, Melanie. Um, and it's funny, I actually have a very, uh, it's a very good question. I have a very simple answer. Well, the, the most important thing is you make sure you turn your savings into a paycheck, right? That's the, that's the biggest part of transitioning to retirement I always talk about. A lot of you guys listening to this show are probably between the ages of 50 and 60 years old, and you're wondering just what Melanie's wondering here as far as, okay, great, I've saved up a good amount of money. I kind of liked having a paycheck every month. How do I turn my savings into a, a paycheck? And what I always talk about is that's one of the most crucial points of retirement planning is getting a cash flow and retirement income plan put together to make sure that you're looking at what your next paycheck is going to look like. Because now that you've got a paycheck for 30 years, you don't want to stop and then not figure out what your next paycheck is going to be. So typically what we like to do when we're building out a good retirement plan for some of our clients, it really depends on the client. But some of our clients, Melanie, might have a paycheck from Social Security each month. They might have money in the market that provides a paycheck. They might have real estate that provides a paycheck or a rental income. You have annuities, for like we talked about earlier on the show, that they can provide guaranteed payments as well as structured notes, pensions. So a lot of the times with our clients, when they're coming in, depending on what assets we have to work with, a lot of the times they might have five or six different income streams, different paychecks in retirement to help transition into retirement to make sure, yes, I got a paycheck the last 30 years, and now I have another paycheck that's going to last another 30 years. That's one of the most crucial parts of retirement planning. And I think a lot of the clients we deal with, 
with what makes them, like you said, Melanie, what makes them comfortable with transitioning into retirement is knowing that they have an advisor that's working with them to make sure they have a detailed income plan of exactly where that next paycheck in life is coming from. Melody, just have a conversation with Logan Sadler and you'll achieve a great sense of peace of mind. And that's what we all want. Uh, Logan, I'm going to give out the number here in just a moment here. But one more time, what happens when someone calls that number and leaves a message? Yeah, so it's perfect. Like you said, Ron, you just give a, give that number a call that Ron will give you here in just a second. You leave your name, your phone number on there. We give you a call back first thing Monday morning, and we get you scheduled for our discovery process. In that discovery process, we're going to show you a little bit about what we have to offer and how our firm works and what service models we have. And then the rest of it's really diving into what it is you're trying to accomplish. What are you looking for out of an advisor? When are you retiring? And really making sure that we're getting a customized plan put together for you is our main goal. So if you're looking for something more than just a stock or a bond, you're looking for a real retirement plan that's built to last, give us a call. Get ready for that discovery process, and that's exactly what to expect. 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. That is a number to call for Regary Financial. Logan Sadler, of course, hosts of this radio show here every week, and also you can get him on podcasts and uh, YouTube videos, 888-823-PLAN. We certainly appreciate your listening to the radio show today, and a lot of folks call in every week after this show and during this show, and that's an opportunity to meet Logan, have a discovery meeting, uh, find out some things about him. He can find out some things about you, and then you can decide if you'd like to pursue that uh, any further. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call. A discovery meeting is not going to cost you a penny and not going to obligate you to do anything at all. So why not? You'll get a lot of good information that way. 888-823-PLAN. You're listening to The Financial Beat. We certainly appreciate your being with us today. And Logan, it's been a good show, and I'm already looking forward to next week. Yeah, me as well, Ron. Hopefully we gave uh, you and the listeners some great information there. And as always, appreciate you listening. And uh, check out some of our other informational sources and look forward to seeing you guys next week. All right. Join us for the next edition of The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Regary Financial. The information provided is for educational purposes only and is not intended as investment advice for anyone. All information discussed is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy. The views presented today are those of BD Financial Group and do not necessarily represent the views of Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC. The opinions expressed are subject to change without notice and do not constitute financial tax or legal advice. Please consult with your financial professional before executing any financial strategy. Investment advisory and financial planning services are offered through Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Alpha Star and BD Financial Group are independent entities. SEC registration does not constitute an endorsement of the firm by the commission, nor does it indicate that the advisor has attained a particular level of skill or ability.